Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. Delighted to see you all here this morning. Equally delighted to have you joining us online, those of you that are with us that way today. <clears throat> excuse me. would like to say a special word of welcome to visitors in both places. We're particularly grateful for your presence with us and hope that you find this time of worship together uh, to be meaningful. First and foremost, and most importantly, this morning, announced last week, but you'll see a rosebud on the table today, uh, and that is to celebrate the birth of Lewin Ross O'Neill, born on November 17th. Congratulations to Meredith Tack O'Neill and Patrick O'Neill, and proud grandparents, Jim and Jenny Tack. So Jim, we rejoice with you and your family in that addition. I'm very happy for you, sir. Also, this is the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, you'll see by the doors our Advent devotionals uh, for this year. Uh, the Advent devotion uh, is called, This Will Be a Sign for You. In addition to the devotion, you'll receive a bookmark uh, in your bulletin each week. On the bookmark will be a litany uh, that's printed that will both be sung and read responsively that will be used uh, for the lighting of our Advent wreath uh, during the call to worship periods this Advent season. And so I'm going to ask Puffer if he'll come forward and, and let us rehearse quickly the, the response. And then Blaine will remind you, but you will we'll stay seated uh, during the call to worship just during Advent while we, while we do this. Sir. So we are, we are looking at these um, uh, bookmarks, and the text we sing is the indented centered text here at the top, uh, at the bottom, and on the back page. And we use a tune that is an old Christmas tune from the 15th century. We'll be singing it a number of times over the next few weeks called Puer Nobis. Um, and it goes like this. So hopefully that's a familiar tune. Let's just go for practice sake. Sing that first set of text. A sign will come from heaven to earth. A sign will come from heaven to earth. We wait in patience for Christ's birth. The word of God will take on flesh and our lives will. And we will sing that same tune for the Gloria and for the doxology later in the service. And just to keep you on your toes further, we're going to be singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 88 as the middle hymn. When you get to that point in your bulletin, you'll notice there are some instructions about which uh, group of people sing for which stanza. So just pay attention to those and enjoy this wonderful Advent music. Thank you. You all sounded wonderful. My expectations for worship just went through the roof. It is not our first Sunday of the month, and so I had John Ellis falsely prepared to pass out purple bags, but we will do that next week. Spoiler alert. But I would like to invite Amanda Ogden forward for a word about a couple of events in the life of the church. Good morning. Today is adventure, so we'd like to invite you to come back this evening. Um, Emily and Lindsay and I have been working really hard on setting everything up in Watchhorn, and we even got a little bit of sparkle stuck to us. Um, so there will be, of course, wreath making for the adults, dinner, I don't think it is soup and salad, that's incorrect, but you'll still like it because Jen's making it, and lots of crafts and activities for the kids. So please come tonight if you can. And then next Sunday, PW would like to invite you to Cookies and Cocoa in Watchorn Hall directly after church. Um, we are having a cookie baking contest, and so if you have a wonderful cookie recipe, we would like to invite you to bring that next Sunday. Um, there is a website link, or you can call the church office and sign up. We still need a few more people to sign up, and there is a prize. Um, plus you get to eat cookies, which is the real surprise. Um, and we will also start selling our uh, cookie jar fundraiser mixes next Sunday as well, which everyone seemed to enjoy those last year. So if you're looking for a good gift for your neighbors or friends, um, those will be available for purchase starting next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. <clears throat> Please do note the other announcements in the bulletin. We have opportunities for you to plant trees, fill boxes, all kinds of stuff going on. 
But now, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please remain seated during the uh, call to worship. Son of God. We wait upon the Lord. The Word of God will be revealed to us. We keep our eyes open for Him. The power of the Most High will rest in Him. We prepare our hearts to welcome our Ponder the news that Jesus is on the way. Let us allow the will of the Lord to work in us as we wait for his son. Like the angel Gabriel, we have an exciting announcement to share. Let us share the story of the coming Christ with all those around us. against him, but he comes to be for us.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Direct our attention, O God, above the turmoil of our times, beyond the distress of hermit greed. We look for signs that your realm is near, that your word rules the world. Free us from the weight of heavy cares to bear your joyous truth into our relationships. Join us together in a spirit of thanksgiving and earnest praise as we worship you. Amen. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of promises and possibilities, we admit that we color the world according to our own limited vision. We are often unjust in our judgment and faithless in our relationships. We are haunted by sins that we have not confessed. Hear us as we entrust them to your forgiving care. Help us to let go of our transgressions, to renew our covenant with you, and to live constructively with one another. In the spirit of Jesus Christ, who's coming among us, we await with great expectation. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Now let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I'd like, to invite, I'd like to invite the young disciples to come join me in front. <coughs> Hi, friends. Come on down. Okay. I'm glad to see you today. Today we're going to talk about how God is forgiving. God is forgiving when we make choices that aren't so good. That, doesn't, that means that he doesn't stay angry about what we did. Um, can you think about a time when, something, when you did something wrong at home and you probably got in trouble for it? Maybe you got sent to your room or something like that. Um, God's special son Jesus took our punishment. 
he, we don't have to be punished for the bad things we did because Jesus died for us and took our punishment for us. Now the Bible here, I've got a Bible in here. You know what a Bible looks like. <coughs> In the Bible, there is a story about forgiveness that I want to share with you today. Um, it was about one of Jesus' friends, Peter. Now, Peter was Jesus' friend and he loved Jesus, but there was a very dark time when, when Peter was with some other people around a campfire and they asked him if, if he was Jesus' friend and he, he messed up. He did not say that he was Jesus' friend. Let me tell you a little bit about it. We are going to pretend that we are around a campfire. Hang on. Okay, we aren't going to get burned. It's going to be okay. We're going to be all right. So let's pretend like we're circled up around a campfire. Come, over, come around here. Come close. Have you ever been around a campfire with other people and you stay close to it to be warm? You haven't. Oh, are you in for something special? Sometimes you get to have marshmallows, but you get close and you get warm. That's what we could do. Well, so there were some people around a campfire, and a little girl asked Peter, Hey, Peter. That, the Bible's the other thing in there. And a little girl asked, say, said, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' friends? You can sit wherever you want, sweetie. It doesn't matter. So Peter, Peter said, uh, no, not me. I don't know him. Would that hurt your feelings if one of your friends said they didn't even know you? Oh, Peter made a big mistake when that happened, didn't he? And you know what? He didn't just do it once. He did it three times. They were around that fire on that dark night. And he said, nope, Jesus, never heard of him. Don't know him. That was a big mistake, wasn't it? Do you know that Jesus forgave Peter for that? He forgave him, um, and he even gave him a chance to make up for it. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, I love you. So he had lots of, um, Jesus forgave him for doing that. Now, when you do wrong, we need to remember that God is forgiving. He wants, to do, he wants us to do what's right because he knows what's best for us. But when we make wrong choices, we can ask him to forgive us. Jesus helped Peter make things right. Now let's think of ways we can make something right. Let's say you messed up and said something mean to one of your friends. What could you do that would make it right? Yeah, what do you think? Um, you could say, you could say sorry. You could say sorry. Saying sorry is a very good idea. What do you think you could do if you messed up and said something mean to a friend? You could say sorry. You could say please forgive me. That's right. That's something you could do. What, um, what if we aren't sharing or being kind to others? What's something you could do if you, if, if you realize that you weren't being kind by sharing? What do you think? Do you want to swap? That's a good idea. You could trade and share, and you could remember to be kind to others. What do you think? You could share the toys. Oh, those are good ideas. You guys know that when you mess up, you can be forgiven for messing up, and you can make it right. Very good. Okay. Um, God is forgiving even if it takes us a long time to make it right. God is forgiving no matter what because Jesus already took our punishment. All right, well, you guys... Close your eyes and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us when we make poor choices. Help us to do the things that please you and help us to ask for forgiveness when we mess up. And help us to forgive others when they mess up. Amen. Now, let's pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me.
us pray. O Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So in this gospel this morning, which is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 14 through 18, and be found on page 92 of your pew Bible. But in this scripture, John shows us that Jesus is unique as God's Son, yet he is fully God. Because he is God, Jesus is able to reveal God to us clearly and abundantly. Let us listen for the word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is only the Son himself, God, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Church ready for you every 
heart longing for our king we sing even so come lord jesus come even so So come, Lord Jesus, come. So, when you come to adventure, because you'll be coming to adventure, I'm sure, because it's so much fun. I would encourage you to bring some socks with you. One of the announcements that got left out was PW, Presbyterian Women, uh, you know, are following Jesus' example slightly differently. Jesus washed people's feet. The women want to put socks on them. And so they are sponsor, or they are partnering rather with Socks of Love uh, to provide socks for those that need them in our community. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity tonight at Adventure to hang those on the tree. And that tree, well, there'll be other locations uh, where you can drop socks off during Advent. So please do note that announcement in the bulletin as well. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes <clears throat> from the seventh chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the tenth verse. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, <clears throat> Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ has come. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Today we begin a new church year as we enter the season of Advent. But in truth, Advent is more than a season. We are really living all of our days in Advent times because we are living between the birth of and the second coming of Christ. In Advent, we wait with expectation for the one who has already arrived, already departed, and has yet to, but will, return. The word Advent comes from a Latin term meaning arrival or coming, particularly the coming of something having great importance. The Advent season, then, is both a time of joy-filled anticipatory celebration of the arrival of Jesus Christ and a period of preparation through repentance and meditation and penance for his return. Advent began sometime after the 4th century as a time of fasting and preparation for Epiphany rather than in anticipation of Christmas. Epiphany, you'll recall, celebrates the manifestation of Christ by remembering the visit of the wise men. Sermons focused on the wonder of the Lord's incarnation, the literally putting on flesh. At Epiphany, new Christians were baptized and received into the faith. And so the early church instituted Advent as a 40-day period of fasting and repentance to prepare for that baptismal event. Later in the 6th century, St. Gregory was the first to associate the season of Advent with the coming of Christ. Originally, it was not the coming of the Christ child that was anticipated, but rather the second coming of Christ, Christ's return. By the Middle Ages, the four Sundays had become a standard length of the Advent season, with fasting and repentance during that time. The church, over time, also extended the meaning of Advent 
to include the coming of Christ through the birth in Bethlehem, his future coming at the end of time, and his presence among us in the here and now as the Holy Spirit. Modern day Advent services include symbolic customs related to all three of these advents of Christ, birth, presence among us, and future return. One of the most visible signs of the season in our worship is the lighting of the Advent candles. The candles signify the increasing crescendo of light throughout the season, beginning with only one today and growing into a sanctuary full by Christmas Eve. The organic symbol of remembering the birth and preparing for the return of Christ is the increasing light that ever fills the sanctuary as more candles are lit. As each week we draw near to Christmas, we experience the increasing brightness radiated by the candles in our midst. Lighting an Advent wreath is a custom that began with the Lutherans and Catholics, gotta give credit where credit's due, in the 16th century Germany. During the season of Advent, one candle is lit each Sunday as part of corporate Advent services. But many Christians enjoy having their own Advent wreath at home as well as a part of celebrating the season. You'll have the opportunity to create your own this afternoon, and I hope that you will. I hope that you'll also join us in reading and reflecting on the Congregational Advent Devotional. This will be a sign for you. The title for today's devotion is The Story of the Sign. The focus verse is Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The you being addressed in that is King Ahaz. During the reign of the evil King Ahaz, who, as you'll recall, even sacrificed his own son, as among other things, was the twelfth, twelfth king of Judah, and war had broken out between Judah and Israel. The king of Israel entered into an alliance with the king of Syria, and they went to Jerusalem to besiege the city. When King Ahaz learned of the coalition against him, his heart sank. He was an evil king and knew that he could not expect God's intervention for him. But God sent the prophet Isaiah to Ahaz to give him a promise. The message from Isaiah was one of comfort and sealed with a sign. Even though the kings of Israel and Syria formed an allegiance against him, God will intervene. Isaiah told Ahaz to ask for a sign to authenticate the promise from God. He refused. So Isaiah gave a sign from God and shall name him Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means God with us. The Son of God was manifest in the flesh. This is a promise that God will be true in the line of David. Judah will have a future, and the future will be established through Emmanuel. The New Testament clearly saw this passage fulfilled in Christ. John 1.14 declared, And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us. But we live in an unprecedented time of challenge in terms of knowing or otherwise experiencing the presence of God in our lives. One issue is our increasingly secular society leaves little room for even the possibility of faith, much less silence and solitude, little time for making ourselves available to God without expecting anything from God. God is with us, but do we take enough time to be intentionally with God? 
Another thing that is a hindrance from us experiencing the presence of God in our lives is our unwillingness to give up control to God. God is with us. That is the promise of Scripture. Yet that isn't enough, if we're honest. We want to tell God how we want to experience God. God, I really need a miracle. Cure my child's cancer. God, I really need a miracle. Send me a job. God, I really need to hear your voice in the silence of my soul. See, we even want to dictate the kind of experience that we want to have. It only seems fair if we take time to sit and be still and be present with God, we want to take something away from that investment of our time and energy. Now, obviously, that is clearly wrongful thinking. But I'm afraid that that's how our consumer society tries to program us. So we need to remind ourselves that there is nothing that we can do to force or guarantee some particular experience of God's grace and power in our lives. But we will experience it. We will experience God's grace and God's power in our lives. God's covenant with creation is to redeem it from the inside out. The promise of a Messiah is grounded in God's intention to restore us and to use us to transform the world. We each have a role to play as the divine story of God at work in the world unfolds in our ordinary lives. As today's reading from our devotion reminds us, Advent gives us an occasion to reflect on what God has done for us, but also invites us to see what he is doing in our own lives right now. We will see in the coming weeks that the story of Jesus' coming is a story of great love played out through remarkably mundane circumstances with a few surprises along the way. So it is with the divine mystery in our lives. God will surprise us. Let's take time this season to pay special attention to what God has to share with us through the mundane and the miraculous moments of our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Parent, give us the eyes to see your plan for our lives in this new Advent season. Amen. Please stand if you are comfortable doing so and join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He returned into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Unslumbering God, at an unexpected hour you sent an unlikely liberator to an undeserving world. God who hears our prayers, we offer them this day for those among us that are sick, that need your healing touch in specific ways. We pray for those that are dying that they might find, feel a real sense of your presence during this time of their living. We pray for those who woke up to another day of chronic pain, 
ease their suffering. We pray for those that feel alone in the world, lost in the shuffle. Help them feel a sense of your presence with them. Lord, our hearts are overjoyed and we thank you for the promise of each new birth, especially today for Lewin. We thank you for purpose for our lives, for meaningful work to do for you in this world. We thank you for the gifts that you give us that make that work possible. Lord, help us forever be faithful partners with what you would do with our lives. Keep us faithful in unguarded moments and alert in uncertain times so that we may seek your unmeasured mercy, serve you with undivided hearts, live together in unbroken community, and greet you with unending praise. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our undying life, in whom we know your unfailing justice, unfathomable grace, and unlimited love. The church has different ways to receive your pledges, tithes, and offerings. If you are worshiping with us in the sanctuary, offering plates are located by the doors as you exit the sanctuary. Please drop your offering in the plate. If you are worshiping with us from home today, you can support us through the website by clicking the Give button on the home page, through Venmo by searching for F. PCOKC, or you can mail your contribution to the church. Thank you for your support of the ministry of First Presbyterian. Now let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. The one who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Let us worship God with our pledges, tithes, and offerings.
us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. the proof of God's amazing love is simply this. You were given this life to live. And in God's mercy, you have been kept all the days of your life. And as a sign of God's never failing grace, your life has been redeemed for a purpose. So I charge you to go out from this place and continue living in the midst of God's purpose for your life. And as you do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the light of his wisdom to shine upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm. 